scripture will say that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore we thank you because we can find joy in your presence outside your presence all manner of things can happen and as we have been called to carry your presence we can carry joy continually and so Lord I pray that you would help us to live in joy help us to dwell in joy help us to dwell in peace in your shalom in the name of jesus let your overwhelming presence continually rest upon our lives in the name of jesus rest upon our souls in the name of jesus that soul that is undergoing you know a tearing apart like a turmoil in the name of jesus let shalom overwhelm your soul in the name of jesus let the joy of the lord be made manifest in your life in your heart in your soul in the name of jesus let there be the bursting forth of joy let there be the bursting forth of gladness the scripture says that he that sits in heaven shall laugh regardless of the experiences upon the earth regardless of the things going on in the world he that sits in the heavens shall laugh and out of his laughter judgment comes forth and so lord we pray that you will bring joy into our souls you bring gladness of heart into our hearts in the name of jesus abba father we thank you we give you all the praise we give you all the glory in the name of jesus we have prayed amen and amen hallelujah father we thank you give us understanding this morning in the name of jesus all right so this morning our move is talking on the ark of safety and our scripture in Genesis chapter 6 to 8, the ark of safety. Um, consequent upon the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, where Adam disobeyed God, the earth was plunged into darkness as it were, and wickedness began to increase upon the earth. We may not realize the extent that our, in quote, simple disobedience can take us to. But for Adam and Eve, that simple act of disobedience plunged the whole of creation into a down tongue it plunged the whole of the earth into darkness just like david's in quote simple act of the flesh brought his household into tremendous affliction you know one thing i realized from that story of david is that i believe he could have had peace you know having been running around all his youth all his life you know from the wilderness to Saul pursuing him and all of that he was now enthroned as the king that could have been a time of you know some rest so that apart from the enemies that Israel would fight from the outside, the Philistines and all of that, he would have peace within his own house. But he engaged and he ate the fruit of disobedience. And then his house became a place of affliction even for his soul. And so it points out to the fact that there are fruits that we eat and we think is just eating and there is nothing to it. We think it's just a light matter. But if you know the consequence that will come out of that fruit, you would withhold your hand. No matter how beautiful the fruit may look, no matter how alluring the fruit may look, you will withhold your hand. If only you know the degree it will take you to, the consequences that will, that will spring forth out of that fruit. And so this morning, the first thing I want to say to you is don't eat that fruit. No matter how beautiful it may be, withhold your hand. The scripture says that Eve saw that the tree was beautiful, the fruit was you know, good to eat, and all of that, it was in, in, in sight, it was wonderful it was beautiful so when you judge by your human sight it looks it looks beautiful but the instruction of the lord is don't partake of the fruits thereof and so from that act of disobedience the earth and the earth entered into darkness and then the scripture began to say in genesis chapter 6 that the wickedness upon the earth increased and the thoughts of the hearts of men was only evil continually that's genesis chapter 6 and verse 5 it says and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually was only evil continually so wickedness began to multiply upon the earth in the early part, part of the scripture it said that the the fallen angels began to have affairs with the daughters of men and then their products were the giants and all of that and, and all of that and wickedness the heart of men began to be wicked continually they imagine imagine that the imaginations are wicked <laughs> imagine now what the acts would be like because it is from the imaginations of the heart that the actions flow from so if the imaginations the thoughts are only evil continually it means that all their thoughts is just iniquity it's just sin so imagine the landscape imagine what will be happen, happening upon the earth that was the the, the time 
and the season that Noah dwelt in the land. So, from the imaginations of men to the actions of their lives, it was evil and wickedness. And let me just, just say, by the way, that one of the things we must handle in our lives is the imaginations of our hearts. Because before you can act out something, it would have usually grown in your heart. And so Jesus will say, make the tree good and the fruits will be good. So deal with the inside first deal with the tree growing on the inside first it is the tree on the inside that will produce the fruit on the outside so the things that we are struggling with on the outside the pathway to redemption is to deal with it from the inside what are the imaginations of your heart what are the things you expose your mind to maybe you are struggling with pornography and you're like oh god i want to stop what are the things you expose your mind to what are the things that constantly bombard your soul have you been careful just like we talked about some 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 time ago have you been careful to man the gates of your soul appropriately have you been careful to be able to shut the door against you know things that are not meant to have access into your mind because sometimes we allow a lot of things to have access into our mind and then we try to fight the product we try to fight the fruit thereof but that's not the pathway. That's not the pathway. He said, can a man kindle fire upon his bosom and not be burnt? So once fire has been ignited upon your bosom, be rest assured, it will burn you. So in dealing with the, with the flesh, it must be dealt with from the inside, your, your thoughts. He says, where well, shall a man be cleansed in, in his ways? He said, by taking heed to your word. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. You see that? So taking care of your heart, your mind, the imaginations of your of your mind will go a long way in making sure that you live right that's just by the way so the scripture says that in this time earth was filled with wickedness and the lord began to repent of you know the man upon the earth because of the actions of the man and the scripture says in verse 7 and the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repents me that i have made them Verse 8, but Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. So it means that even in the midst of the iniquity of the earth, in the midst of the avalanche of sin and wickedness around Noah, a man was still able to find grace. A man was still able to find grace. A man was still able to live right in the sight of the Lord. A man in the midst of the darkness of his generation, in the midst of the darkness of the earth, in the midst of the iniquities around him, a man still obtained the report that he found grace before the Lord. That means that God looked at him and from the eyes of the ancient one, this man obtained favor, this man obtained grace, this man was a righteous man. This was not the testimony of fellow men. No, it, that means that he had been weighed on the eternal scales and he was not found wanting. So how can a man be sustained in such a dark realm and he will still be light, he will still find grace before the Lord? It means that no matter the generation we are in, no matter the turning of the centuries, no matter the time that we are in, no matter the advancements and all of that, and all the changing cultures and all of that, no matter that, even if we are in the 100th century, even if we are in Gen Z and whatever, the Lord can still bestow grace upon our lives that no matter the, um, the decadence upon the earth, we can still stand and stand for the Lord. He says, but Noah found grace. But Noah found grace. Are there men whose testimony will be, but, and you put your name, but, so so and so found grace. In the midst of the wickedness, but this one found grace. But this one was a righteous man. Can that become our testimony? Because no matter how the time changes, the standard of the law, the foundation of the Lord cannot and will never change. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19, it says the foundations of the Lord, they stand sure. The foundation of the Lord stand sure. And upon it is this here, that the Lord knoweth those who are his. Let he that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So the standard of the Lord is not, it's not just about receiving Christ. No, it, it says that it should show forth in your actions. Because he led the ones that named the name of the Lord. So the, these people that he was writing to, they have received the Christ. But he was saying, let these ones who named the name of the Lord, let them depart from iniquity. So they should allow the workings of the Christ in their lives to make them journey away from iniquity. To make them journey. So they have to interact with the grace that is found in Christ to be able to live a life that sustains the capacity to maintain the standard of the Lord, even in a dying generation. Even in a... This is just you know, the prelude. Of, this is not like the meeting I wanted to discuss. But before we get to the act of safety, our lives must show forth. Because in 2 Peter, Noah was called the preacher of righteousness. 
So we have to find grace. There is no excuse we can bring before the Lord and say, Oh, I lived in a time that the world, it was not easy to be a righteous man. Everywhere you turn to, if you don't do this one, you will not have money. If you don't do that one, you will be poor and all of that. You will not have success and all of that, according to the word definition of success. There is no excuse any man can present unto the Lord and it will hold water. The standard of the law is sure. The foundation is sure. Our duty is to receive grace, is to obtain grace, to be able to live according to that standard. Have you received a kingdom that cannot be moved? Let us therefore obtain grace. So the obtaining of grace is that we lean in on the Christ through partnership with the Holy Ghost to ensure that our lives represent the totality of God, just like the life of Noah did. And Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man in the midst of the evil of his generation. So can we lift up a cry in one minute or two and say, Lord, grant me the grace. There's a song that says, Give me the grace to follow, abundant grace to follow. I need your grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. There is the need for grace. Because if grace does not come into a heart, that heart will, will be bent by the evil in the world. The systems of the world will take you and squeeze you out if you don't have the requisite grace to be able to stand in the midst of the wickedness of the earth. And so there is the need. So the scripture says, come boldly to the throne of grace. You will find, you will obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Can you pray in a minute or two and say, Lord, the grace I need to be able to stand upon this, the firm foundation of the Lord, the grace I need to be able to, to, to defy the, the, the immoralities of the present generation and stand in righteousness for you, the grace I need to have the purity of heart, to be sustained in purity, that no matter what comes my way, no matter the trials and temptation, I will stand. He says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. So after everything, after all the waves of the sea, after all the storms, after all the floods, he says, stand therefore. So at the end of the day, you should not be found missing. You should not be found swallowed up in the iniquities of the world, drowning in the iniquities of the world. Can you cry for grace this morning and say, Lord, I need your grace to follow. Lord, let there be an outpouring, the working of your grace in my heart in the name of Jesus. Let there be the working of grace in my heart. Oh, Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and Amen. So in the midst of the darkness upon the earth, God found Noah and found him a righteous man and Noah obtained grace before the Lord. And then through Noah, God began the making of the ark of safety. The scripture says that God came to Noah in verse 13 of Genesis chapter 6. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall you make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which you shall make it there, thereof. The land so, 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 and, and thereof. So, so God came to Noah, the righteous man, and says, I want you to make an ark. So this ark will become an ark of safety that will preserve a generation. So in the midst of the darkness of the earth, God is looking for acts of safety that will bring preservation to a generation. For every time there is destruction or there is judgment, God always goes ahead and offers men acts of safety. So that because judgment will not come without, without an escape. So he sends men as preservers of nations, preservers of generations. And so God came to Noah and said, make an ark. And the desire of the Lord is that each and every one of us will become that ark of safety. That even though as we are living in, a, in the time where wickedness is abounding, and the honor and the fear of the Lord is diminishing by the day. That the Lord wants us to become acts of safety. So that as we sail upon the earth, men can find us and find safety. No matter the size of the ark, whether it be because the ark of Noah is not the only ark in the scripture. There is the ark that bore Moses on River Nile. So whether your ark is bearing one man or it is as mighty as that of Noah to hold different animals and different men. What matters is that you are doing what God has bid you to do. Because sometimes you can begin to compare and to contrast. Oh, my own is not fine enough. But stay in your own unique calling and be the ark of safety where God has called you to be. Don't begin to compare the ark of Moses or the, the ark of um, Jacobet. And begin to compare to the ark of Noah and begin to say, Oh, my own doesn't make sense. Look at how small this one is. If God has called you in that small place, stay there and do the bidding of the Lord. So no matter where you are and what God has called you to do, God has designed it to be the channel of deliverance of men. 
so that if you are not careful to build that art that God has instructed you to build, men that were meant to be saved by your art will drown in the floods. And so God has called you, God has called every one of us, you and I, to become acts of safety. That in the dying world, people can come into you and find life. When men are suffocating, they can come to you and find fresh bread. When men are in darkness, they can come to you and find light. That is who God wants you to be. Acts of safety. So you must begin to realize that this is what God has called you into. God has not called you into the earth to look for what to eat, what to drink, what to be clothed with. No, that's not, that's not, the, that's not the core essence of your life. Those ones are just additionals. He says that if we seek these things, eh, if we seek these things, then we will be no different from the Gentiles. He says, for this is the same things that the Gentiles long after. But our calling is different. He says, seek here first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then every other thing will be added. So our job description is not the computer we are typing away at in, in, you know, in the office. Our job description is to seek the kingdom. So that even though we are behind the computer in the office, we still have kingdom in our hearts. We are still looking out for the opportunities that God is bringing our way to bring men into safety. So everything becomes a platform for the kingdom to come. Because we have come to realize that we are acts of safety. When you understand the responsibility that God has placed upon us, it will make you to labor. He says, I walk, walk while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can walk. So when we understand the responsibility that if we lose our guard and we do not do the bidding of the Lord as the Lord grants us opportunity, men are likely to drown in the floods. They will drown in the judgment that is coming. And so you begin to offer your life as the act of safety as God grants you the opportunity. So wherever you are, whatever your calling may be, don't despise it. Because sometimes we lose sight of what God has called us to do. And we, we think that it is only the prophets, it's only the apostles, you know, you know gathering, packing stadiums full that, <laughs> that is doing the work of the Lord. No, 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 no. You are called in your own unique place. And your calling is valid. Your calling is valid. You know, I was sharing somewhere some days back and the Lord was speaking to us about the sun and the earth. The earth rotates in its axis, right? And then revolves around the sun. The sun does not move. The sun just stays and shines. So different job descriptions as it were and each person is satisfied in his place. The sun will not look at the earth and say, ah, you have been moving since, since I knew you. Why can't I move? Or the earth will say, ah, the sun has been shining. Why can't I just, you know, be like you? Let me stop moving and just... He they, they, said that they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. So whatever God has called you, recognize it that it is an act of safety and steward it effectively. Wherever you are, whatever God has called you to, recognize that it has become an act of safety. Whether in the marketplace, whether in the mountain of religion, whether in the business world, wherever, media, entertainment, wherever, you recognize this as, pl as platforms that God can save a generation. And so there are several things we can learn from the ark, which is where I will just tie things up. The ark had the capacity to carry a generation. So in that which God has called you, are you building the ark that Noah built? It could contain all the animals of the earth. As many as the Lord had bid to come, they came and they found space in the ark. The story was not that hey, they were entering all and then the ark was filled up and then, you know, some had to remain and be destroyed. No, the ark had the capacity. So are you building capacity to be able to carry every life that God will send to you? Or will certain people be out in the rain because you don't have the requisite capacity to carry them in? So it's a call because Noah spent years, at least five years, building, hitting, and building the ark to the exact dimension that God required. So are you careful to build your ark to the exact dimension? Yes, I know we are doing this one and doing that one. You are doing that one and doing that one. But have you built yourself to the capacity that God requires you? Because sometimes we can be deceived by results. Oh, I have the results here and there. But is it to the capacity that in this season, are you serving to the capacity that God would have you serve? So if God has the marks for, for me to be able to save 10 men in the month of October, I can save five and be glad. And then five would come my way and I will miss them because I didn't have the capacity to hold or to uh, bring them in. And I can be happy for the five, which is fine and good. Not knowing that I have I didn't build my act to the capacity that God needed it to be to be able to save that man. And so Noah built the act to the exact capacity God needed him to build it. 150 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. And he built 
three decks according to pattern and so god is calling on us this day to begin to build our lives to capacity build capacity in that which god has called you to do in that which god has put in your heart to do the place of reading the scripture and fellowship with the holy ghost studying books in line with what god has called you to do is paramount capacity the ark was accessible number two the ark was in a place whereby the animals could find it the men could find it and so our lives must be accessible our lives must be accessible that as we journey through the day we are accessible that men can find us and find safety in us men can find in us a refuge in the days of storm men will not look at us and say ah, nah, me, I, I cannot go um, to this person no. i don't know what he will tell me now so our lives must be accessible number three is that noah pursued after men for the years even before he started reading, reading the ark he was a preacher of righteousness second peter chapter 2 verse 5 he was called the preacher of righteousness so he was constantly preaching righteousness going after men and then when he started building the, the ark men will come ah, what are you building? say the flood is coming oh come and enter the ark come come turn unto the lord the flood is coming he was always going after men so our heart posture must be that we will go after men as god grants us the privilege and the opportunity and brings people our way we will do what it takes and to offer them the safety that they need finally in being an act you must learn to listen to god's instructions everything noah did was according to instruction build an ark now let let everybody enter the door was shut after the end of the um the flooding god opened the ark brought them out so it was according to god's instruction and so in our journey through life for us to be acts of safety we must hack in onto the voice of the lord we must hack in onto that voice of instruction do this one now oh he put somebody in your heart you are able to go and you know do what god wants you to do in that person's life you are able to hack in diligently onto the voice of instruction god told philip stand by the way join yourself to this child and he obeyed and out of that obedience the ethiopian eunuch was salvaged so it will take obedience to bring men into safety because it is god that can lead you in what to do what to say who to talk to who to give that call and all of that and all of that on obedience so as we join in the we, place of obedience that is where our purpose will be fulfilled talking about jesus he said when was obedience was complete he became the author of eternal salvation without obedience we cannot become the salvation that god wants us to become to men so it will take the leadership of the lord and the instruction of the lord to be able to bring men into safety and so can we pray this morning briefly and say lord may i stay in my place and be that act of safety for the generation tied to me in the name of jesus lord whatever it takes to be that act that men can find rest in that men can find safety in that men can find security in lord help me to become that act in the name of jesus our father we thank you in the name of jesus we have prayed